your last ship panelist right here at Nerd HQ. Please welcome to the stage Adam Baldwin, Travis Van Winkle, Marissa Neatling, Jocko Sims, and Hank Steinberg! Oh, you're right. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You fucked it all up. Here. You're down there. You're down there. Travis, you're right here. Marissa, you're right here. Thank you so much. Jocko, Hank. Otherwise, your names are gonna be all jacked up on the live stream. You'll all have everybody else's names. All right. Hey, look at they made it, everybody. Hey. What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? Um, so, how's the, how's the Nerd HQ going? I think it's going Are you guys enjoying Nerd HQ so far this weekend? Pretty good. We had a William Shatner panel today, buddy. Oh. We heard. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. William Shatner. And he had, <laughs> he had two people come and sit on his lap for questions. It was like Santa, but disturbing. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic. I'm a little oh, disappointed Adam. here, Zach. Adam, a little can, can you top that, Adam? What? Oh, because there's nothing in your is, cup? This is water. Hey, Joe, we need... Oh, because it's water? Yes. <laughs> dude, we water. can get you a cocktail. What do you want? I would love that. Uh, I think we got one on the way. Double okay, fantastic. And a side of coconut water. It's on the side. D did you get that order in with somebody? It, it is. I think it's on okay, the way. Okay, Jocko wants his cocktail as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Joel. In, anybody else? Anybody need anything? Jocko, Jocko wow. has... I, nobody actually even... They were like, no, no, so, you're too late. You're too late. Wait, Jocko has a radio show that he should tell you about. And there is, there is oh, some drinking yes. that goes on at that, that radio show. Yes, and Adam was so gracious to come and, and bless us all because he is a god. I'm gonna say that all day, just embarrass you. Um, I, we, I host a radio show with my mom, and I get drunk with her every week. What? <laughs> it's Great a little weird. That. It's called Apollo Night LA on every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific. Check it out, ApolloNateLA.com. And we play mostly hip hop. We play unsigned artists, and we have comedians come by, and we critique the music. And Adam came in and critiqued hip hop. It was the most classic thing. <laughs> You would ever see it was amazing. Yeah, but I was worried about the guys that, that submitted it because they, they called in and I, I didn't like one of them and I was afraid yeah. that. Well, they're not gonna shoot you. Listen, they're not gonna shoot you. No, not shoot Why do you even bring that up? For real. Life is not really like boys in the hood. Oh, okay. All right, good. All right, <laughs> All right good. good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, who's got a question? Who's got a question just burning a hole in your pocket? Who has money they want to give me? You have money you want to give me, or you have a question? For a donation, I will. For a donation? Yes. Wait, I, you just want to give me money for, no, for nothing? You don't want anything in return? Well, of course I want. Something. Well, what do you want, sir? <laughs> and keep it clean. Do you want to clean. sit on Adam Baldwin's lap? No. <laughs> what was that, huh? What? I didn't hear that. She just offered for him to sit in your lap. No, 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 we're not going there. We're not going there. I was there. considering. Well, wait a minute. How Guys, much? it's the Hold last on. panel of the night. Hold I got on. a dance floor I got to get to, for heaven's sake. Yeah. How much, Zach? I don't know. How much you want to give me? I'll give you $240 if I can get a picture and autograph with him and an autograph from you. That's amazing. Are you going to donate it to the children? Am I, am I, am I what? Are you going to donate it to the children? <laughs> yes. The money? That's yes. all for Robert's mom? Yes, I mean, I'm, you, you down? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that right after we uh, yeah, finish the panel. Right after the panel. Yeah. Right after the panel. Woo. Just find a volunteer. Thank you, sir. That's very nice. Wow, that was really easy. No. <laughs> I should just do every panel. Who wants to give me money? That's what I should say. I've been, I've been auctioning things off. I should just say, who wants to give me money? It's, it's so much easier. Much easier. Uh, come on, questions for our panelists about Last Ship. Yes, you, ma'am, right there in the center with the glasses and the blue shirt and the big smile. Um, my question is for Adam. Um, throughout your season, do you wish that the captain was going to die so you could take over as captain? <laughs> Be honest. He's not here, is he? <laughs> Are you talking about Last Ship or Firefly? <laughs> Either one will work. Both. No, <laughs> no Eric, Eric's my buddy. I, I love uh, working under him, and, uh, and it's, uh, yeah, a real, it's a good uh, chain of command, so I'm, I'm proud to serve as his uh, second-in-command. And Hank can tell you more about the <clears throat> storyline going forward, but as long as I keep brown-nosing like this, I may stick around for three or four more seasons, so... We're talking about a spinoff called The Second to Last Ship. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to need a commander, so. Yay! I got my own ship. I think the title has a real ring to it. <laughs> you guys know who this is? Hank Steinberg, the creator of The Last Ship. Round of applause for a minute. <laughs> Hank, 
Can you give them something, please? They come out to see you. Can you tell them something that nobody knows about the upcoming episodes? Just a little bit, right? You guys want to hear something that nobody knows? No pressure. I just got fired. <laughs> Semi-spoilery, yet um, not giving away anything. I'm trying to Should think. we come back to you? I think we'll we move think. on to the next question. Let me okay. think of a good one. Yeah, that's good. All that's right. good. Next question. Uh, right over here, this gentleman. So, uh, how much of the uh, filming do you actually do on real Navy ships, vice, just you know, taking footage and moving on from there? Uh, I say we've gone to San Diego three different times to film on a few different ships, uh, and then we also go down to San Pedro. We film on the USS Iowa, and we film on real ribs uh, in the water near Long Beach. So most of the time it's real. We'll do a lot of the studio stuff when it comes to the interior and the CIC and a few other things, but for the, the most bridge. part, we're, we're on the real deal. Yeah. Would, you say, would you say, Hank, it's about 80, 20 percent uh, studio to working on the actual ships? Or would you say it's 70, 30? Oh, our, our sets versus the actual ships? Yeah. Yeah, about 80. 80-20. 80, 80-20, yeah. 80 on set? 80 on the yeah, set. Yeah, just, yeah, it's just cost prohibitive to go travel down to San Diego with the whole crew and... Yeah. Lock, yeah, lock, all lock the lock. interiors that you see on the show are on our sound stages in Culver City. Um, and the exteriors, the, all the stuff on the decks is, is done here. The art department's amazing. Amazing, because the pilot was shot on a real destroyer here, and the next episode from there on in was shot on our sets, and you can't tell the difference between the sets on the pilot and our, our sets. We had the Secretary of the Navy come to our sets in Culver City and look at them. He was, a, first of all, he was a huge supporter of the show, um, as all the Navy is, and he was just blown away by, um, by, he thought he was on a destroyer, just, you know, on our sound stages. And then, of course, he did a cameo playing himself. Um, if you saw that episode from a couple weeks ago when they get the files from the White House, that's actually really the Secretary of the Navy. So it's pretty cool. Wow. My computer actually works, too. Your computer actually works? <laughs> Good for you. Know. Our computers never <laughs> work on Chuck. What do you look at? Is it have internet access? Because I can't get Wi-Fi on the stage to save my life. I think, I think mine does. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, next question, right down here. So I was lucky enough to be one of the sailors that got to actually be a background actor with you guys. Um, and one of the things that was really interesting was talking to the other actors and figuring out that, or explaining what we do and how fascinated they were in what we do. And we're all watching you guys on TV. So I'm curious, as you guys got to go on ships and, and see how we do things and what we do. First of all, who did you like the least <laughs> out of all the actors? I really want to know. Don't answer that. Like, I'm going to go with that. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, after seeing what we do, if, was there anything that surprised you or anything that just you can't quite get wrap your head around or, or what surprised you the most? Uh, I think what surprised me is the age. The average age of most of the Navy men and women were 18 to 22. Like really, really young kids. And all of them that I spoke with had aspirations to do things outside of the Navy. A lot of them wanted to, a few of them wanted to be an actor, an actress. Another one had a clothing line. Another one uh, was big into poetry. So to me, I was so surprised to see, I don't know, I guess sometimes when you, when you think of the armed forces, it can dehumanize people some because they're these soldiers and they've got to be tough. But when it comes down to it, these people were, they're just like us. And they have, they're, they're very creative and they're expressive. And that, that was really cool to, uh, to really see eye to eye with them. Adam? I was going to say, yeah, I would echo that. It was surprising how young and, and disciplined they all were, and also that each individual aboard has their own specific job. They have a job, and they also have their Navy duties uh, aboard. So they're, they're working towards a skill set that can carry them forward, whether they stay in the Navy uh, as a career or whether they go out into the civilian force afterwards. So, uh, But just to see the, uh, the look on some of the young faces just going, yeah. You run this platform, this weapons platform, that is just a dev I'm just glad they're on our side. Yeah. Marissa? The, I would say the age. Yeah, yeah. It, it was shocking, really. Um, 
Yeah, just echoing what you all said before. They're your age. Yeah, and I and I was so impressed with uh, the pride that each person took with with the job that they had on board. Um, so yeah, a healthy sense of pride. I don't know if I was so much uh, surprised as I was uh, taken back with, like you said, the sense of pride and the commitment. When I first stepped, uh, I told the story a lot, when I first stepped foot on the ship, I think it was the USS Dewey the first year, I played a lieutenant on the ship, and sailors not knowing whether or not I was an actor were coming up to me and saluting me. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do, I didn't want to <laughs> salute wrong. Or, but uh, someone told me that they were just saluting the uniform, and it's just, you know, you can nod or salute back. and. Uh, it just showed to me the, the dedication and commitment they had, just that one small gesture because they didn't want to make the mistake of assuming that, you know, I was an actor and I wasn't. So it was, it was a great, it was a great feeling. It was a little bit overwhelming, as a matter of fact. I loved it sometimes we'd walk down the, uh, down the dock and we, there's a, a security gate, of course, and <laughs> the guys that knew us, they wouldn't salute, but the guys who didn't know us, they may be standing there and they would, oh, uh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> And then the other guys started laughing at him. Ah, it's just a fucking actor. <laughs> but I guess the rule is you salute it in... It's better to salute someone that doesn't deserve it than it is not to. That's, that's one of the other when cool things is that we're actually filming on active ships. There's 200 servicemen and women who are running around doing their jobs. Some of them have been tasked to uh, painstakingly be actors on our show. Uh, no, they, uh, they... And they're so you know, happy to, to serve us. And they're so thankful and they say, we're just proud to be here and, and represent the show in, in this way. So it's just amazing. It's an amazing experience. It's good to have the, uh, it's beyond good. It's amazing to have the support of the US Navy. And everyone in the cast and crew takes that to heart. We really appreciate and respect and try to honor. We're humbled by the fact that these men and women have invited us aboard and the US Navy has welcomed us into their family. And so we try to, turn that off, please. We try, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's, your, what's your name? We should, Darling, he's all bark what? and no bite. Don't worry about Adam Baldwin. <laughs> mean true. Santa. What's your, what's your name, young lady? I'm trying to live up to my character. What's your name? Yeah. Oh. You are my sole reason for coming here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what? Come here, no, come, come here. here, come on. Come up, oh come up, come, come up, on. your phone come rang. Come on, come here. Listen. No, you don't have to, I'm not gonna put you there. Yeah. What did you bring me? I, I don't look. All right, oh. don't look. <laughs> don't look? Both for me? Open that well, shit up. Well, he's gotta look at some point, right? Or is it just oh. a bag with a bunch of paper in it? <laughs> it's stuff and things. Okay. I wanna know what it is. By the way, really quick for the question, thank you so much, thank you for your service. Yes. And a round of applause so for the US Navy yes. and all the armed services. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Let, give her the mic. Yeah, give her the mic right now. Um, no, take the mic. Just take, just take the mic. <laughs> you can't feel your legs? I'm, I'm totally... I want what she's sitting she, wrong. What's she drinking? I want some of that. Um, Do you need some water? Uh, uh, just go, go. There you go. I don't have 200 and whatever no, it's, dollars. Do you want to sit in his lap? Dude. <laughs> Dude. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on. Get come up on. here. Your 15 seconds is almost Come on, up. Get up here. I... Come on. Hi. Yeah. Now, Adam, pur purr like a kitten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Ladies and gentlemen. What? What? Hey. Yo, twerk for him. Yo, Travis, narrate this in your Tell deepest voice. Why are you a mockingbird? That mockingbird oh. don't sing. Shh, shh, shh. There we go. Don't yeah. have to be rich to there be we go. Girl. What's up? You, you, uh, what? A hundred bucks for a what? Picture. Oh. For a picture? Did you say it's, stre it's streaming to the world. Your stream, you got better than a picture, honey. This is going to be immortalized on YouTube forever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your step. Watch your we could, step. We can we could try and work a picture out later. We can try and work a Watch picture out later. I'm glad the feeling in your, your legs came back. <laughs> oh, no problem. Anytime. So the last ship. Uh... <laughs> uh, who has a question? Right back there. That gentleman. 
That was a burp. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, you, you, darling. Yeah, go ahead. I almost said gentle. It looked. I don't know. I you couldn't did. see your face. I don't know. I, I, strong hands. She strong hands. Strong. Hands. I don't know. I beg your pardon. I hold no hard feelings against you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for calling me out, sir. <laughs> Even though everyone heard it anyway. Yes, go ahead. Um, I just have a question. It's actually like the very first episode when I watched it. You guys were like in Antarctica or whatever. And one of you said something about like, oh, 60 below outside. And I've been in those temperatures. And the first thing that went through my head was bullshit. They're not dressed <laughs> warm enough for that. But I was wondering like in real life, like when all of through all of your careers, like, because I know being on the boat, you probably heard the stories from the servicemen and the just horrible temperatures you have to go through. So what is the worst conditions or the, like the most extreme temperatures and conditions you've been in like throughout your careers? I did a movie called Jarhead years ago, 2005. And um, I was, <laughs> kudos to the stars of Jarhead. I, I, I was more or less a glorified extra, but I was on the movie the whole time for five months. And we had this scene we shot up in Castaic, I think in January. And it was, um, I looked at Zach, you were in the movie with me? No? You know. Sure. <laughs> I'm like, I just looked for you, to you Why for assurance. Um, but it was, it was snowing, um, and we were crawling through the mud um, and, and water, and it was, uh, we were drenched, and I was freezing cold, and um, some actors were, were quitting. It, it, was, it was horrific. It, I mean, for me at the time, and I, I don't know, I just, I, I wanted to quit, and one of our advisors said, it's all up here. <laughs> and uh, I just kept going, but it was terrible. Freezing cold. I filmed a movie in Canada called Bloodwork uh, with Trisha Helfer. And it was, I would say, somewhere around 25 degrees. I don't know what that is in Celsius. I always forget that shit. It doesn't matter. OK, great. It was cold as hell, and we were wearing basically just uh, a hospital gown. And I happened to be sick, and we had to be outside for the entire day. And someone spit in my face that day in the film. On, so it was like the, one of the worst days I've ever had. But I got paid for it. And I got to work with a really beautiful woman. So I did it with a smile on my face. And, <laughs> and, and now he's got tuberculosis. <laughs> Indeed. So worth it. Marissa? Well, this is my first, uh, my first gig. <laughs> oh, come on. So um, I was not filming anything, but my, I'm Greek. And I was uh, on the islands in Greece, and I think it was like 120 degrees when I was on the beach. And you couldn't, um, you couldn't walk from wherever you were putting your towel down to the water. You had to basically just walk in the water, or you, you'd completely burn your feet. So, yeah, Mykonos, that's my, <laughs> Mykonos is hell my in Greek the summertime, story. I know. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. So, there are big problems in the world right now. <laughs> that's OK. The temperature of your Money is not doing so well right now, so I'm sorry not to hear good. about that. That's not, good. That's not good. Adam, any uh, soon, any tips? Too, too late. No. Well, no. I, I <clears throat> empathetically, I was riding a horse in uh, the Patriot, and I was empathetically feeling the misery of the guys that were slogging through the mud. Uh, it was a little chilly that day. Sympathy pain. I, I personally didn't have to suffer through the mud crawl, but uh, I, I, that, that was as close as I ever came to having an extreme condition out there. I was in the Mediterranean Sea watching a free diver at one point. It got a little, you know, a little maybe cold, but it wasn't too bad. I mean, the water was maybe 85, so it was, but it was wet. It was very wet. Thank I, you, Adam. Um, that's it. Yeah. I, I don't get on that side of the camera, but one of my first jobs was... Um, what did you do, get a cramp while you were writing? <laughs> I, that, that does happen, oh. a little carpal tunnel. Yeah. Um, I was a set PA on a movie called The Mighty Ducks with Emilio Estevez. Yes! The Flying V? You came up this. with that shit? <laughs> I, I did not come up with it. I was a PA, <laughs> production assistant, which meant I was standing in the 11 degrees in Minneapolis holding an umbrella over Emilio, <laughs> so that the snow didn't get a, it, fuck up his hair. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Hank. Nice to meet you. I really like the Breakfast Club. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how my career began.
You, That's you, you win that round, Hank. You win that round. <laughs> Hands down. Uh, next question. Right back there. Is those gentle woman? <laughs> um, this question's for Adam. I'm just wondering how he enjoyed his recent trip to Australia. I went to Sydney and Perth. I visited a wonderful uh, entertainment uh, pop culture event called Supernova. And I met uh, beautiful Australian people. Were you there? Yeah. Oh, you were in Perth, yeah. So we wandered down into the Swan Valley for wine country and nice. And we went to Fremantle on a boat and uh, walked down, these are different cities, down to the uh, Opera House. What else did we do? Met a lot of really beautiful people. I uh, love Australia. I know Yvonne Strahovski's traipsing around back here stage somewhere. She's from Australia, so she was really my first introduction to the niceness of the, and the bodiness too. <laughs> that, that, she can swear. Oh, bo oh bo body. 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 Not yeah. body. Well, that too. <laughs> but well, that's that, what I thought too. you meant. Clearly. You had a pretty good game, but and I thought, well, that's very body of you to say. Yes. <laughs> I think that was Emilio Estevez. <laughs> they just upstaged us. Who was that? <laughs> Who was that? No, it was Yvonne. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, Hank, if we could do a last ship like trip down to Australia, that would be great. It's, we're, um, we're working on it. Okay. Is it three? About that reveal that you're going to give to them. Anything okay. yet? Okay, Jocko. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to say that Jocko's gonna get someone to smooch. Oh, uh, yeah. They only saw that in the trailer. They already saw that in the trailer? Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, I forgot you don't watch television. There's a trailer. Your show, it's running. No, I'm, 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 I'm too busy, too busy. Um, you already knew that? Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll come back. Come to back you. to me. <laughs> uh, next question. Yes, you in the hat. And you got a mic coming at you right there. Yeah, I just want to ask uh, Hank, the writer and creator, where did you come up with this idea and how long have you been working on it? And how long did it take you to get a studio to pay attention to you? Um, uh, let's see. Well, uh, Michael Wright, who was the head of t TNT, um, when the, the project was uh, conceived a few years ago, had been um, in love with the book, The Last Ship, which was written by William Brinkley in the 80s. It was a Cold War era, post-apocalyptic. The premise of the book was that there was a nuclear holocaust and there's a ship um, of Navy people kind of tooling around in the water and, and trying to survive. Um, so that, Michael Wright brought the book to Michael Bay um, and asked him to produce it. And then uh, Michael Bay's partners, Andrew Form and Brad Fuller, went to their agent and said, you know, we need a writer. Um, and it happened to be the same agent as mine. So in, in this case, um, it kind of fell into my lap. Um, so I went and met with them. I thought it was a really cool idea. Um, and uh, I was really busy doing a bunch of other things. And I thought, um, I could use a little help, so I called up an old friend of mine, uh, Stephen Kane, who I went to college with, who is also um, a great writer, and uh, we decided to collaborate. Um, and then we sat down and, over a series of lunches, tried to figure out how we were going to update the book because the idea of a nuclear holocaust just felt, you know, very felt a bit dated. Um, and pretty quickly, we came up with the idea that a pandemic would be more interesting and not only a more interesting premise for a way to wipe out the world, but that on the flip side of it, it wouldn't just be meandering around the seas being upset that everyone's dead, but that there would be a way to fix it. Um, and that from there came the idea of, oh, there's a, what if there's a cure? And then what if there's a scientist on board the ship who has the cure, which then makes that ship the most important place in the world for fixing the world. Um, so it just, it kind of evolved naturally out of a series of conversations that we had um, and, uh, and in this case, it's the best way to sell a TV show, which is it's already sold. Um, you know, the head of the network wanted to do it, and in this case, it, was, it went the other way, where 
I was fortunate enough to have it um, come to me. That began, I think, around three, three and a half years ago. Fairly quickly. Yeah, it, as I said, it really helps when the president of the network wants to make your show. So it's like, <laughs> you, you go in to pitch the premise for it, and he's already bought it. Like, every, it, it, everything just kind of goes more quickly that way. And we didn't have a studio. The network owns it, so there's not that extra layer. So everything just moved a lot faster in this case. But it actually went pretty slowly once, once we got it cast. Once you guys got it cast, we shot the pilot. Then we waited almost a year to shoot the first season. Then we waited, what, six months for that to actually be on on air. So it took, it's, we've been a part of this project for about three years now and we're yeah, only no, that, like to a couple episodes of the second season. That's true. The development went quickly, but then the pilot took a long time to shoot and quite a long time to, to cut. And then Michael was, um, Michael really wanted it to be a summer show. So I think we had finished it. Um, I, I can't remember anymore. It's it all blending together, but we had finished it well ahead of the time that it first aired because um, he was holding it for the summer. Um, and uh, now, now we're on a more you know, rigorous schedule now that we're, once we're on, we're on now. We, we're still, you know, the writer's room for season three will start in a few weeks and we'll still be finishing up episodes from season two, you know, music and final visual effects and stuff like that. That's provided uh, there's a pickup. That's yeah, provided, no, no, provided, we, oh, provided the show gets picked up. Oh, was that a spoiler? We've been picked up. Provided the show gets picked up, we'll be getting the writers. <laughs> was that is there a surprise? That, no, no, fuck I'm, that. I'm, is there something that you guys know that we don't know? <laughs> Are we going to? I don't know three? anything. I don't know anything. You just covered for him. I'm, you know, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little I, cocky. I would we're cover, gonna, I would, we're going to get the writers from going. Right. Yeah. Jocko, just take it in. Let it go. You heard what you heard. Let's move on. Obviously, always talk in the positive. Right, like on like on Chuck, right? We sort of we're got, it's got to happen. So, right, Zach? Yeah, that's totally what we did. <laughs> that's right. Next question. I mean, we would always believe, I guess, provided enough people ate Subway sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know that I was actually p uh, really optimistic about it. I was always just kind of like, well, look, you know, if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I, that's one of the hard things about it. You put your heart and soul into something and you go, but then you got to, at the end of the day, say, this could go away. It could just totally go away. And you just got to be okay with it. I, I always remember loving those two little uh, videos that Fedek and uh, Josh did. You know, when we got picked up. <laughs> Fedek was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> now I have to write more. <laughs> that panic. Yeah. Video. They did. Well, it was the first show he had ever run. I mean, yeah. now, and that was a big show. Yeah. It was a tough show. Yeah. Uh, next question. Right here in the front. Hey. Good. How you doing? Good. All right. Uh, What's up? First of all, I've, I've been in the Navy for 17 years. I've worked under five XOs. You are the nicest XO I've ever seen displayed <laughs> ever, anywhere, at any time. Almost Whoa. to the point of non believability, but, you know. He you want to sit on a... his lap, don't you? What's that? You want to sit on his lap. Are you trying to make no. him mad right now? No. No, I'm good. I'm good. Sit down, E3. <laughs> <laughs> no, kidding. 17 years. How many XOs do you know put an axe through no. a man's chest? Yeah. I'm sorry? How many XOs do you know put an axe through a man's chest? Not a one. Yeah. Not, not a one. Yeah, thank I'm God. That, I'm not that nice. Thank, thank God. No. Um, but what, I, I, but what, I, what I learned on the Halsey was that it was, it was a, an uplifting sort of... Uh, <clears throat> The role that, that the XO needed to know. That's, that's, yeah. Okay. Shh, we'll go he he sure. can be enough of sure. an ass on set, so on screen sure. he just he tamed it a little bit. Well, yeah. if he's an ass on set, then he's being an XO. He's doing his job. Sorry. Right. Um, Hank, will make me meaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm willing to take notes from anyone. That's how we make it a good show. <laughs> My question is, um, you all play various, you know, uh, roles on the crew in different. Uh, flavors of officer, right? So from the top down. And um, I was just curious, how much research did you do into, into your specific characters? You work in EOD and XO and, you know, yeah, yeah, so on and so forth. Well, I tried to, by osmosis, get as much information as I could from the captain and from the XO aboard the various ships that we were on. The first one was the Halsey. And, uh, You know, there were uh, com there's Command at Sea, which is a book written by uh, Admiral Stavridis, and we that was really our Bible text go-to 
it's a lot of information to gather in a short period of time. So uh, obviously I try to do it justice and as best I can, but I mean, captains of guided missile destroyers know a hell of a lot more than I'll ever know. And it's, it's, it's amazing. They know that they know the ship stem to stern, top to bottom, engineering all the way up to the bridge. They know everything. And that's, that's really, really impressive. What, what was your rank, sir? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I had to play a Navy SEAL, so I just surrounded myself with watching every single video I could find, um, talking with any Navy SEAL that I, that I had met. And I, we had a Navy advisor that was with us that didn't come to the first season, but he started in the pilot, and I, I harassed the shit out of him. Um, and I, and I just started reading books on the psychology of killing and, and being in combat. And I just started studying the psychology of it, and then I started training. I started doing a lot of CrossFit. And I know Navy SEALs invented CrossFit. And I started doing Muay Thai, and I started doing knife and stick training. And uh, so I just threw myself into the world as much as I could, because I know that there is no way in hell that I could ever be as skilled as a real Navy SEAL. So I just tried to do everything that I could to just somewhat hopefully emulate them just a little bit. And then the audition for The Last Ship came along. See, that's how I prepare for every role. Even for this, for this panel. I was back there doing push-ups. I was talking to Julie Pleck, who came out before. I do the salmon ladder. Do you call it a salmon ladder? Is that, is that a ladder? What is that? Son of a... I, the salmon ladder is the thing was like, the, they got to like, kind of do like kip-ups. Like I'm kip doing that. That's, that's for season three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. <laughs> Assuming that there is season three, provided, season provided we would three, yeah, it's a uh, pickup and all that. Optimistic. And, and for me, I, I actually got cast uh, and I had to shoot the next day. So I was in New York City. I got cast four hours later, six hours later, I was on a plane uh, and shooting 12 hours after that. So I, I had to play a bit of catch up. Um, but we have the Navy with us every step of the way, every single day. Um, and so for me, I feel like it's always continual training. Um, all those acronyms, gosh. Um, so, uh, so it's nice. It's nice that they're always with us and you're always learning. Um, and I feel like the best way to learn is to ask the real deal. You're really good. I, I'm always impressed with all that language you guys speak in the CIC. And I thank God I'm not in there because that, that's crazy. I, I, uh, I, speaking of videos, I watched some, even though Burke's not a Navy SEAL, I watched the, uh, the documentary, The Buds training online, which was just insane, just to see the commitment that, a little bit of the commitment that goes into the whole thing, and that was very inspirational for me. An anecdote on the side, just about the strength training. You remember Big Tony? Remember yeah. Big Tony the SEAL? Tony Rapinski. Yeah. He's... Not to name names. <clears throat> yeah. So we were sitting around chatting about Full Metal Jacket, a movie I did many years ago, but my character carried, my char my character carried the M60. And we were just chatting, chit-chatting. He goes, so what was that thing weigh again? Is about 16, 18. I see he has 18 pounds without the ammo. Gets, uh, he said, that gets pretty heavy over the day. You know? Yeah, it does. You know, you carry it around. Yeah, after a while. But, you know, I was young and brave and strong and stupid then. So he said, uh, you just get stronger. <laughs> he had to be there. <laughs> He said you should get stronger? No, you know, you get tired carrying this thing around. The seal creed is we'll just get stronger. Oh, so oh, it just, oh, so it just doesn't get seem heavy. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I guess we had to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wish I could. I actually go didn't back understand what you said, otherwise I probably would. Uh, Hank, were you gonna say something about that particular question? Or I was just gonna say that without the Navy, the dialogue would be something like, shoot him. <laughs> Fire that missile. <laughs> Oh, no, they're firing at us. That's how the first draft reads, and then we give it to our advisor, and then it comes out like you see it. Have you, are, are you um, aware of the new Navy tech that's coming out, like the, like the kind of laser tech that they're incorporating into some of their warships? and Railgun, rail like that kind of stuff? And are you thinking about somehow being able to incorporate that in the show? You know, the, you find the, our, our Navy liaisons and, and advisors are often pitching us stuff. Of, this will be really cool. You got to show this. And, you know, we're somewhere between, like, 
let's serve the story and let's be a commercial for the Navy and right. we, we end up somewhere in between. All right. I like that. I just like lasers. Uh, but, they, you know, they lent us the hospital ship, um, which we shot the whole episode on for last season, which was just incredible. And without that, I mean, last week's episode looked like a $50 million movie and we just we just couldn't have even conceived of it if, if we didn't know we had that from them. I mean, we knew we had it from them before we ever even talked about the story. We had seen that, that ship, the, the hospital ship, and we'd seen it in the harbor, and we'd asked, do you think we could set an episode on that, on that sh ship? Because it's just so cool. Um, and we got the clearance from way ahead of time, and then we crafted an, a whole story, like what would be the reason that they would want to go on it, and it ended up be becoming a really interesting and major story point in the whole season. Um, of the, them going there, so it, it's a very organic process but as we work with them. I think it's awesome the symbiosis that you have with the Navy. I mean, you guys show them so much respect, it, even just as a cast, but how you portray them, how you, um, the love that you give them through your creative process, and I love that they see that and they respect that and they go, hey, thank you, you wanna use some more cool shit. <laughs> 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 and that's awesome. Uh, another question, right down here. Hi, um, this question is for Marisa. Mm -hmm. How can you handle being surrounded by such attractive and beautiful <laughs> man on set? Yeah, let's answer I'm that. I'm standing three rows away and I can barely breathe. <laughs> okay, how do you do it? <laughs> well, I just sit back and I watch the show. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much this all day long. Yeah. How you doing? And then girl? you accidentally get pregnant, so. <laughs> <laughs> So that happens. <laughs> She's too pretty, busy learning great. acronyms. Yeah. yeah, dealing with the acronyms, and then I look up and go, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. Back in there. Um, what are you guys' favorite roles that you guys have ever played? Ever? In the, the past? Current the current one. Current one? The current one. Yeah. Always the current one. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, screw that. I got to play, uh, <laughs> I got to play this cop from 1985 that time travels to the present to fight crime. I watched this. And I had a crazy mustache and a scar on my face and my name was Rusty. <laughs> and I just got to be an idiot. And it was, uh, it was the most fun I've ever had. So maybe season three I can get a mustache? Maybe we'll trim. I just figured out the spoiler. Um, <laughs> Uh -oh. Danny tragically dies in episode eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for being honest. Uh, next question right here. You, sir. Emilio! Yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you, give you a chance to hate on your predecessors. Um, do you feel like now with movies and TV, like you have like a lot more responsibility to live up to the military image? So if you look at movies like 20, 30 years ago, uniforms don't make sense, medals don't make sense. They just kind of look sloppy. Like, do you feel like there's a lot more pressure on you guys to really live up to the image? I, I think that social media has changed everything um, in terms of the verisimilitude you have to have. I think probably not just us, but any, I think probably a medical show, a doctor show, a cop show, you've got people who can instantly give their opinion online that potentially millions of people can see. And so, in, you know, you've got Navy people now responding in real time to the show about what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. And, you know, luckily, mostly we're doing really right. Um, I think that makes everyone who is in this field have to, you know, be more, um, more realistic with what they're portraying because otherwise you just get crushed. And in the old days before that, you know, somebody's gonna write a letter to the editor of the New York Times two weeks later. You know, now it's instantaneous. So you really have to just be much more, much more buttoned up with the way you do stuff. And I know the writing definitely has to be on point, but as actors, I mean, do you feel like you have to kind of portray like that military image in your lives, maybe even? Like someone's gonna walk up to you on the street and like, you don't act like you're that character anymore. Yeah. Well, in a certain way, uh, so, you know, you go first, Jaco. Well, I was just saying, I, I don't uh, think so much about uh, hearing from people on the street or, or online uh, as I do uh, about the military advisors that are on the set. And they're, they're literally, thank God we have them, um, because we want to give the fans something that's authentic as, as best we can. And um, they're there just watching our every move. Um, 
in every scene. And oddly enough, during the sex scenes, which I don't know the point of that. I don't know why they're there. That, it worked at the panel in Comic Con. It didn't work it, it didn't work from, you, you can't repeat that joke. <laughs> right you did it the same delivery. You got to change up the delivery. Okay, well, uh, work on it. One thing that I, I do like is is just being around the Navy and, and uh, you know these people. They they're all about service and they stand for something and they 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 really dedicate their lives to making others' lives better. So just being around that environment and breathing in that oxygen, it does go into uh, my our, our yeah. real lives. Where yes, there is, you know, I tend to. Uh, I feel very blessed that we've gotten to work with the Navy because I feel like it has made me want to step up and serve more. It has made me want to stand a little taller. Um, so, absolutely. Nice shirt, by the way. <laughs> how much My do boy you, Blue! How, how bad do you want to serve, Travis? Do, what? How bad do you want to serve? You, right now? You want another drink? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Touche. You don't want to take the pay cut. Yep. Oh. When Wait, your what, face. What did, what did I miss? What <laughs> makeup? I'm doing okay. Hey, yeah. 17 years in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next question. Should be paid a lot more. Way more than us. Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys are the, the real heroes. We're just pretending. Without a doubt. Uh, who's got a next question? Not everybody at once. Calm down. There you, right there. Adam, you've referred in the past. Well, first of all, thank you guys for being here. Um, we really appreciate the fact that you come, you spend your time to help raise money for Operation Smile. I know everybody here thinks the same thing. Um, <laughs> Adam, you've mentioned in, in interviews before that you tend to try to bring something of yourself to each character that you portray. I would like to ask the opposite of that, which is, from the characters that you're portraying now of, of all the actors, what is something that you're taking away from that character that's becoming real in your life now? Mm. Damn. <laughs> Shit just went Good. deep. <laughs> this is supposed to be a lighthearted <laughs> I, I think, well, for me, Slattery is, is a, uh, more of a leader in, in, in he has, a lot more responsibilities than I do. So I try to, through osmosis at home, uh, keep that sort of leadership mean without being a dick. Uh, <laughs> doesn't work at home, doesn't work at home so much, no. No. Uh, so, you know, that. For me, I, um, I noticed, uh, I don't know if I said this before, it's been, it's been a long day. Um, the, the Navy takes such pride in what they do. And, um, and that I think that that's such an honorable and noble thing. Uh, no matter how big or small your job is, you're part of th something that's bigger than yourself. And um, so for me, I feel like I, I've been learning a lot about what that is. What, what, it, what is it to take such pride in the little details of being an actor who knows that your belt can't go a little over this way? <laughs> um, because that's in incorrect. Um, so for me, that's what I've taken away from Kara. Yeah. Uh, I'll answer that. So I think the first season uh, I played Lieutenant Danny Green, he had the emotional IQ of uh, like a cereal box. Um, so I feel like season two, um, like he started to, now that there's a child on the way, um, he feels a bit more, more grounded and, and he's learning to understand how to handle all the pressures and all these, these new stakes of uh, having to save humanity and raise a child in the broken world and blah, 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 blah. In my life, I feel like in this last year, my emotional IQ is raising too. <laughs> Slowly but surely. I'm not crying every week, just like once a week now. So <laughs> progress, progress, progress. Thank you, Hank, for writing Lieutenant Danny. <laughs> Spoiler it's alert, history. Danny dies in episode five. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, did you, did you have anything? Yeah, I had to, I had to uh, copy what Marissa said, and not because I can't think of anything. But You're still burned from that joke that didn't land, aren't you? No, no, no. <laughs> yep, I'm in the same boat as Adam. Uh, we both had, we both, and that's my second one that didn't. <laughs> I was gonna stop talking now. Just I'm keep really drinking. <laughs> No, um, no, seriously, like what you said made sense. I love the fact that you said the, the belt can't be off a little bit and, and 
your ties, your your boot blouse ties, is that what they're called? Yeah, it can't um, be hanging off, and the, and I mean all of that stuff matters. Um, and uh, yeah, what you said. Uh, we got time for one more question, all the way in the back there. Gentle Hi. person. <laughs> Alaska, Zach. Alaska. <laughs> This is for Hank. Um, earlier, Dennis Haybert, Haybert was talking about um, a role that he had where he didn't have to rewrite a single line. And he said it was because the writers knew their actors. As a writer, how much, especially when you're writing something that's not referenced in a book or something, how much do your actors influence the way you write or how you write? And do you try to actually look at them and say, OK, this would really come out of this guy's mouth? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's one of the fun things about television is that it becomes this very organic process where you you learn about the character more and more the deeper you get into the show, and and the character and the actor really start to morph. So you you start to figure out the cadences uh, of your of your actors, and you start to figure out. You know, I think kind of what works for them, what they do well, you know, you find the, the humor that might come naturally to the particular actor as they morph into that role or or whatever the case may be. You know, obviously with, with Rona, you know, she's English, so you, you sort of start to write with a little bit more, you know, British vocabulary for her and, and you know, so you, you just, the, the actor and the character kind of starts to, to morph over time and you start to sort of feel where your actor's strengths may be and, 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 and you just kind of, and you also picture them in your head when you're writing in a different way than if you're, when you're writing a film script, for example, where you don't even know who's going to be cast in that role, and it's kind of just a little bit more amorphous in your mind. So, so I think it happens both consciously and unconsciously over time. How did you know I could shoot the nipples off a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> that we just made up. <laughs> uh, yeah, to, to add to that, uh, definitely there's been a few times where it, Christina, for example, Christina Elmore, uh, who plays Alicia, Lieutenant Granderson, uh, was singing on set, right? And, and I think you and or Steve walked by, heard her singing, and then that ended up in the show. Um, Wolf. They saw, uh, yeah, Wolf, uh, hand -hand Brent combat. Foster, if you guys saw the last episode, The Solace, he comes in, he plays Wolf. Um, you find out that he's an insane martial artist. They've written that in. Um, found out that I was a stud. <laughs> Gave him a hot, a hot He's back, back, baby. He back. is back. He's back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, please give it up for our last year panelists.